First of all, you do have two questions there, and I want to address them both. One question was, when my son or daughter goes away to college, who's going to be the paralegal, the person in my example that kind of like kept me in line, so to speak? And the answer really is, one of the interventions that I really talked about tonight is coaching. And I think that one of the things that parents should seriously look into doing is involving their, their son or daughter with an ADHD coach that specializes in work um, with students because that is a person where you don't have that parental clash and can really kind of help them develop their goals. And, and, and the real key here also is helping them understand enough about themselves to learn to gravitate towards their strengths and learn to na navigate around their weaknesses. And that's really what it comes down to. Uh, and that would be whether they go to school down the block or on the other side of the country. Because the second part of your question is, where is the coaching done or how is it done? And uh, what I was saying earlier is we find, especially for college students who are more independent, that it works best with a telephonic or a Skype interface where they actually see someone having a telephonic conversation with them on a computer uh, and who works with them and kind of says with, to them exactly what your kind of, what, what the, the statement part of your question essentially is. Well, wait a minute, what are your goals for this week uh, or for this semester? I want to do this, 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 and this. You may be too ambitious here. Let's pick the top three or the top two and figure out the surest way to navigate to those goals. And that really is the paralegal in the equation that we're talking about. And it takes the parents out of the equation or a spouse or a significant other out of the equation so that dynamic is not uh, being affected negatively. And you have essentially a means for your student, and, and this is really important, not just a coach to provide structure, support, and accountability for them, but so that they know, it's like the old saying, um, give a man a fish and he eats for a day, teach a man to fish and he eats for a lifetime. The fact of the matter is, what coaching really is, is to empower these students to be able to create this structure and support around themselves. So they're not dependent on a coach. Like I said before, it's not hand-holding. It really is helping them set goals and be realistic about their goals. Um, it's helpful to kind of help them plot their course towards those goals and keep them on track and stay together making an agreement. Okay, if you have a paper done in three w that's due in three months, anybody in this room who's got ADHD knows what it's like when you wake up the Sunday night before the test <laughs> or the paper's due and say, well, where'd the six months go? Okay? I can tell you, if you picture it this way, I, I was tested once, okay? Um, and, and, and this is actually very interesting. I, I wasn't allowed to take my medication, so I was useless in the office completely. And a woman came in and gave me a series of psychological tests, and they uh, broke down into two functional IQ scores. This is what she told me. One of them was on um, working memory, and the other one was on working memory and I can't even remember. Uh, <laughs> one of the scores, I, I scored a 136 or 137, okay, which was extremely high functioning, she told me. But on working memory, I scored an 89, okay? Now, I'm told that if there is a 15-point difference in those two scores, that's considered clinic clinically significant. Now, I got like a 40-point spread going on here, okay? <laughs> So I come home that night, and my wife is kind of watching TV, and she's like, so did you learn anything about yourself? And, 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 and I really think, for the first time it hit me, I, I think I'm like the Rain Man or something, you know? <laughs> I'm like this high-functioning savant or something. You know, I can do things really well, and some things I am terrible at. And so from that, I developed this model in my head. And essentially, if you think of... In, let's talk about New York City. It's this huge metropolis. You got people coming in from all over, but instead of having a huge international airport, they had a very poorly run landing strip, okay? And you got these planes flying in from all over the place, and they've got nowhere to land. So what do they do? They just keep flying around in these holding patterns, okay? And that's what it's like to be inside an ADHD head. Okay? These planes are whizzing around and whizzing around. they got no place to land. But if one of those planes had a bomb on it, 
immediate clearance to land. Why? Because it's an emergency, okay? And people with ADHD gravitate towards crisis situations, and I submit to you that they even manufacture crisis situations <laughs> because it's a means of forced prioritization. It's a way to cope with something that's damaged in here or doesn't work properly, okay? And that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about that Sunday night when the report is due, or whatever. And the goals in the, uh, the, the study, you would be surprised to know, uh, and again, you're going to have to wait to Chad for uh, the, the, uh, the, the nuts and bolts of the study results. But what we found was um, the, the results, by the way, it far exceeded our expectations in the impact that the coaching had on the students and their approach to learning. But what was significant was that the goals that the students came in with were very different in some cases to the goals that their parents kind of had. The parents wanted them to get better grades. They wanted them to get a higher GPA so they could get a better job, which is understandable and wonderful. There were students that were coming in saying things like, I just want to get my assignments in on time. Or there was a woman uh, who had the, uh, I guess she had two children. She was a college student. She said, I just want to get the lights turned back on in my apartment. Okay? A lot of these clients, these coaching clients, are trying to work themselves out of the inside of a paper bag. In, in a way, get out from behind the eight ball, so to speak, okay? Uh, so that is really something that is incredibly significant, and they need someone to kind of work with in an objective sense that's not their parents or not their spouse to really kind of help them figure out themselves. And just like a tennis coach would or a football coach, they can't manufacture talent. They can nurture it. They can help their athlete recognize their own talent and work with it. And again, like I said, the bottom line, this is about learning how to gravitate towards your strengths and dance around your weaknesses. When I went to school, the teachers said one thing to my parents time and time again when I got bad report cards, which I always got. He can stand up in front of a group and he can speak. He's comfortable speaking. He's articulate. He's engaging. We can't get him to write anything. We can't read anything he writes. Uh, he can't structure a sentence, okay? Now, what's interesting is that I still make my living in front of people, either as a trial attorney or speaking to groups like this tonight, okay? And one of the reasons I don't use PowerPoint is because I think it's important personally to make eye contact with the people I'm speaking with, and I feel very comfortable doing that. But what is also interesting is that every single time one of the articles that Marie talked about earlier of mine that gets published, I think about those conversations that these people had with my parents, telling them, you're going to have to just realize that this kid's going to be handicapped, and he's, he's not going to be able to write going forward. And if you could figure out a way around it, that's fine. It took me a while to find my voice, and I found it with the use of a keyboard. Okay, um, But for you students out there, don't let anybody tell you you can't do something. I'm living proof. Okay. And I get asked to speak a lot at places because people want me to speak about the topic of overcoming my disability. I didn't overcome anything. If you would consider someone like me successful, it's not because I overcame my ADHD. It's because of my ADHD. There are parts of it that I, I welcome and I wrap my arms around, and there are parts of it that really scare me and that are unfair to the people that have to live with me on a daily basis. But the fact of the matter is it's, it's hardwired into my system, so I've got to make use with it. And I say that you know, to every student that's out there, every parent that's out there, every teaching professional that's out there, go in with that kind of attitude. There are good things about it. There are bad things about it. Make the best of what you have.